Hi pals and welcome back again to the World of Tanks patch 8.10 test server. I'm Antonov2 and yep, today it's time to have a look at the tier 8 Japanese medium tank, the STA-1. It definitely looks very interesting, it's kind of got a lot of similarities with something like a Pershing or a Patton. And I'm not quite sure about this but I'm guessing that probably the Americans helped the Japanese design these tanks uh, after the Second World War and stuff. If you know anything about that, just please let me know in the comments, but that's what I think because they look very, very similar. Yeah, this tank is really enjoyable, as all the Japanese tanks I've played so far were. It's all round a really good tank with only one major drawback to it, which is its weak armour. Except for that, the tank performs really well, the gun's outstanding, and yeah, that just gets stuck right into the stats. It's got 1450 hit points, that is a lot of health for a tier 8 medium tank. Nearly all tier 8 medium tanks get only 1300 health, this 1450, a tier 8 heavy tank wouldn't have to be ashamed of that, that's as much health as the super Persian gets, it's a lot of health. For example the T-34 tier 8 American premium tank only gets 1500 health, that's only 58 points more. This is heavy tank health at this tier, that's really really good and gives you significant advantage over equal tiered medium tanks. It's again a fairly light tank, like all the tanks in this tech tree have been before. It's 35 tons, not a lot at all. Driving those 35 tons is a 570 horsepower engine, uh, which is alright, but it's not all that amazing. Let's quickly check out the power to weight ratio. It's 16.65. Now, that's alright, but it's not amazing as medium tanks go. And that was the same with the tier 9 tank as well. This tank is not a very fast moving medium tank. It's fairly agile, but it's not uh, fast as medium tanks go. It only has a top speed limit of 45 kilometers an hour. That's really slow for a medium tank. However, the traverse speed is really good at 44 degrees per second. Also, the turret turns fairly quickly with 42 degrees per second. The armor, however, is really disappointing on this vehicle. You've only got 45 millimeters of frontal hull armor, 35 at the sides, 25 at the rear. At the front of the turret you've only got 70mm, 60 at the sides, 35 at the rear. That's really disappointing, you basically won't be able to bounce any shots in this vehicle, except for if they hit the gun mantlet. I have had ricochets from the gun mantlet of this vehicle, it seems to be pretty sturdy, except for that the tank's basically made out of paper. Also you have to be very careful with artillery because you haven't got all that good speed to dodge the shells. If they hit you, you will absolutely be wrecked. These are leopard levels, or actually below leopard levels of the armor. It's just really, really disappointing. But next, we'll move on to the thing about this tank, which is, for me, the most important, which is the gun. Uh, I will be comparing this gun to the gun that the Indian Panzer uses, because they both are quite similar. Uh, let's see if I can quickly call it uh, up. They're both 90mm guns, uh, and of course straight away you can see that the STA-1 gets a 90mm tier 9 gun, while the Indian Panzer only gets a tier 8 gun, so we straight away expect the Japanese gun to be a bit better. Uh, the rate of fire is exactly the same, the penetration is slightly better on the Japanese tank, it's 6mm better. The Alpha damage is exactly the same. The German gun is slightly more accurate. 0.34, that's actually a, quite a significant increase over 0.36 and makes sniping with this gun a lot more accurate. However, the one thing that killed the Indian Panzer's gun was the 2.9 second aiming time. That's a really, really bad aim aiming time on a medium tank. And that's what that was the only thing, basically, that I didn't like about the Indian Panzer. This new Japanese tank only gets 2.3 seconds aiming time. That's a lot less. That's make, that makes playing this tank a lot more comfortable. And I'm gladly prepared to bleed off some of my accuracy in order to get that vastly improved aiming time. So all in all, the Japanese gun definitely is more powerful, it's got slightly more penetration, 
it's got a lot better aiming time, however, slightly worse accuracy. But I think that's a fair deal to make. And I think after looking at this tag and saying that except for uh, the armor, it hasn't really got anything good going for it, it really needs a good gun and it gets one. The view range also, as with all other tanks of this line, is above average. It's 390 meters, which is one of the best view ranges at tier eight most tier eight tanks only get 380 meters view range so that will give you a significant bonus and also you get your 750 meter single range which is really good at tier eight next we'll have a look at the equipment and i would definitely go with a vertical stabilizer on your first slot and a tank gun rammer on your second slot as in nearly every tank for the third piece of equipment you could choose between vents or coated optics again i personally went with vents down here because it's just really cheap costs a lot less than coated optics however if you've got the money uh, feel free to get coated optics they will bring you quite a bonus and vents aren't really all that important on this vehicle the only reason why i stuck vents onto this tank is because i wanted to make testing it as realistic as possible and as close to how it would be on the live server as possible and on the live server on a t8 tank except for if i would really want to keep the vehicle i wouldn't bother about sticking stuff like a vertical stabilizer or a tank on ram on it as i would probably only be playing it for about a month or maybe even only half a month and then selling it again and i just wouldn't be prepared to put that much money into it however the vents only cost 150,000 so that's why I got those. Crew skills are very similar to all the other tanks in this line that I've reviewed so far. You want to get repairs on your entire crew. You could swap them for BIA but I wouldn't recommend it all that much on these tanks. I would rather straight away go for six cents in your commander. You definitely want to have six cents. Um, also you want to have smooth ride and snapshot on driver and gunner. You probably want to get off-road driving on your driver just to improve your maneuverability a little bit, which is kind of a downside of this vehicle. And then you definitely should get safe storage on your loader as ammo rack is a real problem on this vehicle. So uh, having talked all that stuff through in the garage, that's see how this tank performs out there on the battlefield. Uh, I've got a really nice game lined up for you guys, so let's jump right in. So as you can see, we've spawned on Fishing Bay and this is a pretty good map for this tank because it gives good opportunities for medium tanks, especially like this one with amazing Japanese gun depression. Uh, to walk this ridge line here in the center of the map and that's exactly what I'm aiming to do. Basically I'm going over to the left side of the ridge line here and I'm just going to drive along the ridge line trying to get some early spots in and maybe intercept enemy scouts that try to pull over here. That would be the WZ-132 in this case. Uh, and then later on I want to position myself at uh, e7 about and snipe into the tanks trying to advance through the town at least that's my plan at the moment uh, so I'm kind of playing it cautiously here it's a tier 9 game they've got some very nasty tank destroyers on their team but I don't want to get hit by they've also got two Rhine Metal Borsics which are pretty dangerous so I have to be careful uh, and that's why I'm only advancing very slowly probably I spotted that IS3 back there and oh yeah, there we go. Oh good, he's on very low health. Could we? Oh, that's really good. That's really, really important for our team that we took that guy out. He's got a really dangerous gun and taking him out that early in the game without him being probably able to get a single shot in uh, is really important. There's a Tiger too and I don't, my first shot fired more or less clutch. So uh, this is the kind of situation in which I would have liked to have a vertical stabilizer. And uh, I get my second shot in. He uh, only hits my track, which is lucky. And now this is the point in the game where I realise, oh my gosh, look at the left flank. We're being rushed hard. And uh, at this point, I'm considering to turn round, but I just really want to finish off that tiger or still do a little more damage on this flank before I head over there. And I could see that there was an object 704 and also another object 704 and um, uh, IS3 are heading over there, so maybe they will be alright. Um, so for the moment, I'll just keep on working these guys over here. I can't get any shots in that for Tiger 2. Heavy tanks are taking damage, but now is the point where I say, 
okay, I've got to get over there and help. There's a tortoise over there, and I really don't want to stick around here with that M103 poking the ridge. So, right now, we are pinging the map saying, watch out for that M103. I'm not going to face off against that guy on my own because I'm definitely going to lose uh, one against one engagement with that tank. Uh, let's see if we can get some cheeky shots in on the Centurion, but he drives into cover before we can pull the trigger. Basically, I was only planning on firing clutch, but this time maybe. See, aim, aim, and yes, good. The 230 damage is just below average. And here you can see the really fast reload in this gun. And there's the tortoise. Now, in retrospect, what I probably should have done at this point is pull into cover behind that rock on my left side as quick as possible because I could have seen that the tortoise would easily deal with that AMX 1390 and then while poking the ridge line he would probably switch to shooting me. Uh, so at this point I realised that I can start angling backwards but the tortoise gets one shot into me and this is the point where I say or oh, to hell with attacking this tortoise, I've just got to get it to cover here. Now I am really, really lucky, first of all, that the, his shot gets absorbed by my tracks. Now I'm on fire, oh my gosh. Anyway, I was really lucky that my shot was absorbed by my tracks there, otherwise I would have been dead by now. <coughs> Sorry, um, I've, I'm, I've got a bit of a cold, that's why my voice is so harsh. Uh, see. <coughs> Really sorry for that. Anyway, uh, in retrospect, I should have definitely pulled behind cover, but it was also lucky that I was able to penetrate that tortoise with one shot. Now, it's basically me and that IS-3 against the tortoise uh, and the Centurion. At this point, I hadn't realised that the Centurion was, uh, had retreated to their base at D3 by now. So, uh, I was still thinking that the Centurion would be coming round here. Uh, if I had paid more attention to the map in this situation, I would have by now flanked round and killed the tortoise. <coughs> I've still not realised that the Centurion is at their base at this point. So I just figure, okay, screw that. I'll just have to take the risk to take this really dangerous gun out of the game. And here we go. Oh, he's turning round and good. I secure my second kill on the tortoise. Again, a really important kill in the game. And now... This is the point where I say, oh, the Centurion is out of their base. Okay, that's Russian. But I have to be careful because the two Rheinmetall Bore 6 have been spotted at A2 and A1. So I've got to be really careful while advancing here. Um, <coughs> now, maybe a few minutes ago you saw me going in chat. I've got a lag here. Something was going wrong with the game. You couldn't really see it in the replay probably. But when I was actually playing the game, I had some problems. Uh, the Rheinmetall is spotted up there, but I can't get any shots in. Let's see if we can quickly loop round to kill the Centurion, but now he gets knocked out. Now you see me loading high explosive shells straight away down below in the bottom of, on the bottom of the screen because I know that the Rheinmetalls have got really, really bad armour and I just want to get the most out of my shots in terms of damage. I'm being really careful because I know that the Rheinmetall Bore 6 have got the superior view range to me so they'll probably be able to spot me before I spot them. So I'm using this IS-3 as a kind of a meat shield advancing behind him, looping round. I'm trying to uh, get to an angle of engagement where the Bore 6 won't be expecting me from. Uh, the IS-3 is making the brave attack. I'm being a bit more cautious. We can also see that they're both platooned up, so if they've got any brain at all, they'll be sticking together here to maximise their damage output. But one of them spotted on their own. Okay, let's go for it. Let's go for it. He's on fire. Okay. But the IS-3 gets taken out. And he's not aiming this way, and I fire one clutch and make it count. Amazing. Now, in the replay file, you maybe have seen that uh, I was aiming above that little wall, that wouldn't have been necessarily ah no that was important because AP ammo and APCR ammo can only penetrate these little uh, walls and destructible stuff in patch 8.10 uh, not HE ammo so now I'm looking at the map and I am 
basically requesting help, but it looks like the, the Object 704 has been sitting in our base for the entire game, apparently, and is all probably AFK, and probably the T29 went AFK too. <coughs> so the IS-6 also writes AFK in chat, so I'll have to do this on my own. I'm on really, really, really low health. This will be a big problem. Now, this is where I really miss XVM, because XVM would tell me on how much health that Ryan Mattel would be, but he can basically one-shot me, and because of my low armor, he can basically fire HE at me, or I'll have no chance of bouncing any shots. So, oh, and they spotted Andy's on full health. I tried to get a shot in, but he's turning his turret too fast. I really don't want to risk getting shot by him here. I draw behind cover. However, now I see him advancing, and I'll try to get the most out of my gun, and... Oh, he missed the shot. Really lucky I make one shot count. And this is the great thing about AG. I'm able to get in a lot higher damage output. I see that he's using the one 5mm gun. So I managed to get a second shot in before he retreats behind cover to reload. Because on the 150mm gun, I know he's got a very, very long reload. And now I'm trying to get another shot in while he comes around here. But he's got very low profile. We can't make it happen. But now he's in one shot range of me. And can we get him? Can we get, ah uh, no, I, I miscalculated that angle, he misses a shot, this is really, really big for us, now we can rush in and, and okay, I know though that his reload is way longer than me, so if I'm really lucky, I can still kill him, and yes, yes, I make, I make it happen, and I get the kill, and we were basically able to make that Ryan Metal look really, really stupid there, and secure the fourth kill and the victory for our team. So I hope that really showcased this tank for you at the end. I hope that really showed that we could make our superior gun depression um, work against that Rhine Metal uh, and sniping in front of that ridge up there was really good. Uh, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed the game and that's quickly check out the after game stats before we go back to the garage for a post game summary. So we got a first class mastery badge, 43,500 credits and 8.645k experience. However, you must remember that's our times 5 for the first victory of the day. Uh, all the same, that's not a pretty nice result. We spotted 1, 2, 3, 4 enemies. That's really interesting because we first spotted that Waffenträger auf Panzer IV. However, he only had 26 health when we spotted him. That's really, that's strange because he must have been damaged without being spotted because we didn't get any spotting damage on him. So now that's really strange. However, we managed to kill him along for Tortoise and for two Rheinmetall Borsix. Uh, if we move on to the team score, we can see that we got the most experience by far on the entire team. We had a 200 experience lead on the second best. And we also got the third, the third most damage, I think. Yep, so that's pretty good for a tier 8 tank in a tier 9 game. Interestingly enough, that wasn't enough to get us the mastery badge in this tank. We only got the uh, first class badge. So, well, that just shows you how good people are doing in this vehicle. Also, we managed to get 15 shots fired, however, only 12 hit and 11 of those 12 penetrated. That's actually a pretty good ratio. We dealt out nearly 2,600 damage, received four hits, of which obviously all four penetrated, but one of them only damaged my track. Uh, actually, two of them damaged my track only, one of the tortoise and the other one fired by the tiger too, I think. We received 1,520 potential damage, which only slightly surpasses our hit points. That's because of the f uh, because the tortoise set us on fire, um, and we detected four enemies, spotted six, destroyed four, and 1,211 damage was assisted by us. That's really good. So uh, yeah, we could also keep only half of our uh, of the money we earned because we had to replenish our armor and stuff but all the same i hope this game really showcased the uh, sta1 for you guys especially the moments at the end where you could see the amazing gun depression of this tank come into play and all in all just as the two tanks that come after this vehicle here in the tech tree i really really like the look of this tank i can't wait to get my hands on it i think it's going to be a joy to play through and i'm probably going to keep it as a tier 8 vehicle once i get to it for things like team battles or tank companies or stuff so i hope you enjoyed i hope i could showcase this tank a bit for you if i could make sure to comment and leave a thumbs up 
or even sub to my channel i would appreciate that a lot and i hope i'll see you in one of my next videos um i'll see you then and bye bye